Hey everyone, I'm Irving Marine. Welcome back to the channel and my next Escape from Tarkov video. We're going to dive into another hideout guide today. I know it's been a while. I got way out of practice doing these and wasn't staying consistent like I should have. So I apologize for that. Some of you probably don't even need these anymore because we're so late in wipe. But for those of you who do, let's get right into it. All right, so real quick, a couple of rules, uh, explanations, whatever you want to call them to get out of the way. This is done for pure profit reasons, not to make you more money with using less ammo or any other reason you would use the hideout you know tasks things like that it's just for pure profits and it's done in a ruble per hour basis so you have to understand that all of the conclusions i come to are based around that if you are trying to make the most individual money per craft that's different you know if you're somebody that only logs on once a day and crafts one thing there's a different way of looking at it than this but that is how i'm going to approach this video the next rule is don't stack crafts in the same module so for example don't craft red gunpowder hawk gunpowder and then use that to craft m61 you just end up losing out you don't make as much money doing that you are better off selling the red gunpowder and just continually crafting red gunpowder or just crafting m61 and selling m61 because what happens is when you use the red to craft the m61 you have to apply that craft time of the m61 to the red gunpowder as well so it just lowers the profit that you make out of that and uh it just doesn't end up being worth it in the long run so don't stack crafts uh, number one rule anybody who's been around here a while knows that but there is a caveat to that if you cross modules so for example if you make wires and then use those to make defibs or if you craft stuff in the laboratory and use that to craft stuff in the med station or if you craft stuff and use that for barters to craft something else a lot of times that actually does work out okay for you because there is such a big difference here and we'll talk about some of them specifically but there's such a big difference in the price of what you can sell it for and what that nets you between uh the flea market fee and all the other stuff that it actually works out okay it's primarily don't stack crafts in the same module. That's the biggest rule. And lastly, this isn't a get rich quick thing. You're not going to get rich quick doing this, but it will make a huge difference over the course of a month or the wipe, you know, make tens, twenties, thirties of millions of rubles doing this. And really what it does is it just helps feed your raids. You know, if you have one or two bad raids, it doesn't kill your profits and you still have a little bit extra money laying around that you can get back into raid with some decent gear. So let's, uh, let's get into the, the nuts and bolts of this, if you will. All right, so the first one we're going to talk about here is the med station. Pile of meds, that's your number one craft. It makes you the most money. Your goal is to try and get Augmentin for less than 17k. Usually pretty easy to do, uh, but that's your kind of cut point. Above 17k, you kind of want to hold off. You'll still make money, you just don't make as much. And obviously, the lower, the better. And then I push for, you know, 12, 12, 5 to sell the pile of meds. That can be tough some days. There's a, a trick here with making a ton of pile of meds, you know, 10, 20, 30. There's some guys in the Discord that make hundreds of these and sell them in stacks of hundreds. That that's a bit extreme for me and maybe a bit extreme for you, but the bigger the stack, the higher the price you can sell and they'll usually sell. A little trick to keep in mind with this is that if you're using pile of meds to craft, again, remember don't stack crafts, buy the pile of meds when they're cheap. You know, if you see somebody that lists six of them for 9,000, snatch all of those up because you're gonna use those in other crafts or barters and we'll get into those in a little bit. But that does two things. One, it gives you cheaper pile of meds than you're even crafting. And two, it eats those out of the market and pushes people more towards buying your pile of meds. So just keep that in mind with the uh, pile of meds. You can make money as low as 10.5 on these. Um, actually, the best money, you start to get close to the SJ6 at about 10.5. Um, with these prices so anything above 10 5 you're pretty good the next thing on this list is going to be sj6s and you see me crafting propodols and those we'll talk in a sec these are kind these are a little bit behind a pile of meds but if you're getting out of raid with like a let's say you get an sj1 or a, a saline solution out of raid and you die and it's in your secure container and you don't have that found and raid check mark this is the best thing to do with those you'll make pretty decent money doing that and it converts that item into something that's worth a lot more because sj6s are going for like twenty five thousand and I think they sell for like 12 or 13 to the vendor. So you're doubling your, doubling your money you get out of those items. Now, there's a little trick here that I do. Um, anybody who's been around a while knows this trick, and it's the propitals. And what you do is when you craft these, you don't just go buy your components. I use golden stars, and we'll go look at my character real quick. I use golden stars in my secure container, um, and pretty frequently. You know, I'll use two or three of those uses in a raid, depending on the raid of what it is. And when I get those down to one or two uses, I don't use them up. 
and I sure as heck don't take them on a secure container. I love running Shoreline and finding people that found something good and they took that one out of 10 golden star out of their secure container and put something in there because you know what? They should have taken something else out probably. You know, that one out of 10 is worth more than a serve kit by a lot because that serve kit's only worth like 10K a slot. Whereas right now, golden stars selling for what? 130, 140, 150K sometimes uh, for a 10 out of 10 or, you know, somebody trying to scam. But that golden star is essentially worth that even at one out of 10 because you can craft it into seven propotols. And propotols have been selling a lot really high right now. Some people take this to the next level, actually, and they do the same thing with ibuprofen. They'll switch back and forth. You know, they'll use up a golden star and they'll use up an ibuprofen all the way down to a couple uses, and then they'll throw that into their craft. Me, I just buy the ibuprofen. I just cut my losses. And part of the reason is, is I can't craft them fast enough. You know, we'll go look here in my inventory. I have a whole boatload of golden stars that I need to use up. But that is uh, that is just a little uh, trick. And the reason that works is because I don't count the golden star cost in that craft. And I use that propotol, either use use those or I sell them and use them to buy more golden stars. It's just this cycle that you keep going with. Over at the nutrition unit, you kind of get stuck. There's not a lot you can do here, but there is a little bit of money you can be made. Right now, aquamarines are your number one craft, and they're not going to make you a ton of money. Uh, they do okay, especially if you're using crafted water. You can buy your components and still make money, but if you're using crafted water here, it'll do okay. You shoot for about 13,000 um, on your aquamarines, trying to sell them at that, and it, that can be tough. There's, I mean, we'll go look at them right now, and if you look on the flea market, you know, you've got all of these selling for 12.5, 12.6. I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these things in here. Here, uh for that so th that's one thing you can do with the aquamarines uh is doing that and selling them if you're kind of in that stage where you need uh budget barters the aquamarines are fantastic for the m1 barter trade uh so if you're crafting them and using them for that you're getting a, a really good level four uh armored rig for like 60k 50 60k depending on what you get your kvasses for so that's a it's a great thing to keep in mind there another way to you know really push up what you're getting the utility out of your hideout is by crafting components that you're using for lots of barters and speaking of that the next best one is the slickers um especially i keep crackers when i find them in raid because you know usually they sell for like 10 12k but they're great for crafting uh you're not selling and crafting in slickers. I usually try to buy my oats for less than 10K. You can find them in that eight to 9,000 sometimes. And then chocolates, if you get lucky and find them cheap, obviously that helps out a ton. But the big thing about the slickers isn't selling them. It's using them as a barter for the scab vest with Jaeger. You do that barter for a couple of reasons. One, if you're on setup, great thing, because you don't have to buy those scab vests. You're getting them for somewhere between seven and 9K, depending on what your components are. But you can also use these in the laboratory for a craft, the scab vest. And we'll get into that when we get over there. But this, it's a huge part of that and making that really profitable and you get this kind of factory machine working in your hideout that's kind of cool and fun to fun to do in my opinion but that's pretty much it in the nutrition unit we'll hop right over to the water collector and the booze generator so water collector pretty straightforward you know just run it run it run it run it run it you know you're buying your water filters for what between 80 and 90k but you can sometimes even get them in the 70s and then you can sell the water for basically the same thing and depending on what level your hideout is i'm max so i i use like half i can think it's like 50% or 55%, whatever it is, I might even be lower than that, of my filter to make one uh, water bottle or one jug of water. So that means that that jug of water is worth 35, 40K, maybe uh, 45K if the filters are really expensive. So when you do that, you're basically just printing free money. You can sell that jug and make money all day long, but the real advantage is taking it over here and either crafting uh, booze or using it to make aquamarines. My, uh, my preference is booze because the big ticket items, it really helps you get your flea market rating up makes you a little bit more money and keeps all of your modules running especially right now that you can buy your components and make money with aquamarine one of the key things to do here and you don't have to do it to make money if you're crafting your water but it really helps is if you barter for your sugars or just try to get them real cheap because right now sugars are going for anywhere from 65 to 70k you know 65 is great if you can get them at 60 even better but what you really want to do is go after these two barters that are in here one with jaeger and one with therapist the jaeger one is five amelia rise and you can get these for about 13 14k which means you're right around 65 70k for a sugar the therapist actually sells gives you two of them or a barter each reset for six pile of meds now if you're getting your pile of meds for 9500 you know if you're you can use your crafts on these barters it's a it's a it's a good use for crafts because you're getting that flea market fee kind of subtraction out of there but if you see them on the market for like 8500 or 9000 this is a great thing to buy them up for throw them into these two sugars then use that to make moonshine it'll really really push your profits up
and then just sell at the market price of moonshine. It goes anywhere from 200 to about 220. Uh, so say 210 average. That's what I would aim for. Put them in there in stacks because a lot of the moonshine use right now is sometimes for thick cases and barters like that, or people, you know, people doing their scav case runs are just buying it. But the bigger stacks sell better. So I'll always try to sell my moonshines in stacks of like 10 or 15 for a little bit higher price and they'll go pretty quick and make you a, a bunch of money and really run this uh, flea market rating up, which gives you more slots, which is, you know, that's how I have eight slots right now is doing this kind of stuff consistently. All right, we'll work our way over here to the laboratory. Uh, take a peek at our favorite little uh, actress that's inside the blue room and talk about what you can do here. And this is actually a really good station for people, especially if you're really hurting on money because the laboratory will actually run without fuel. So you don't have to have your generator turned on to, to craft stuff here, which is kind of nice for some of these crafts, especially if you're really, really hurting for money. There's money you can make here. And, and right now the best craft is Ripstop, believe it or not. Now the key to this though, the key to this being the best craft is that Slickers Barter we talked about a little bit earlier so it's three scav vests for two rip stops but these three scav vests you know you go in here and if you buy them for 18k 20k sometimes they push like 25 30k depending on the time of night you ain't gonna make money don't do that what you need to do is come in here to jaeger get three of these things for slickers like this hand those over and voila you craft yourself a scav uh two rip stops and i craft till i get eight nine ten of these things because i'll pick them up and raid occasionally too and then sell them in big stacks for like 27k 28k you do pretty good because people like again people like to find those bigger stacks because they use these rip stops for the higher end armors so they just like to be able to go in and click and not have to fight for the lower end stuff they'll jump up a little bit i guess jump down on the list to uh, get those items now if you don't want to do this uh, for whatever reason Reason, the bleach is a fantastic craft especially if you really learn the material prices if you know you really want to try to get these the sodiums and soaps for like less than 12 13k and then aim for under like 10 or even 9k for the alkalis and then save up a bunch of bleaches and try to sell them for like pushing 12 5 or 13k and you will make a fortune with these there's guys in my discord right now that are that they're just making million literally millions and millions of rubles selling ox bleach and that's part of because of the barters they're used for but they're uh they're just a, it's a great little craft you just you stack till you get 25 30 of these things list them for 12 5 at the end of the night and most of the time they're gonna sell without any trouble i don't know that i've ever got ox bleaches back when i sell them properly because the time the they timed out people will usually snatch them up especially the bigger stacks like we've talked about about 10 times now the other thing that's a great utility out of this uh station is for some of these tasks where you have to you have a bunch of items that you basically you can sell them to fence or ragman and you, you take it in the pants with uh how much you lose on these things so for example with setup you have a ton of scav vests right well just use those to craft don't sell them craft them here it's a great use for those scav vests and on top of that is punisher part five i believe it makes you use that those packas and if you were like me this late and wipe you have about 400 of these things when you get done with punisher part five don't sell them turn them into two aramids sell those aramids for they go from anywhere from 18 to 22k usually those two aramids are going to be worth far more than the you know, 8, 12K, whatever it is that you can sell this because you can even craft broken packas. You don't have to repair them to craft. They can be zero out of 50. This craft is also, you know, occasionally you'll see these things on the flea market for like 15, 20K because somebody doesn't know what they're selling or they don't realize they can do this with them. They get bought up pretty quick though. You can do that. It's not one of the better crafts, but it's there. Just wanted to let you know. We'll hop over here to the workbench. And this is kind of one of my favorite uh, favorite stations here because there's so many options and there's so much stuff you can do. And it's great for um, if you get items out of raid in your secure container when you die, there's a lot of stuff in here you can craft with that. And when I'm looking to put stuff in my secure container, you know, unless it's like a, a Ledex or a Ratchet Wrench or you know, something that's just worth a ton of money, you know, something out of safes and stuff, items like gunpowders and stuff, I will immediately take out a, a serve kit or a CMS and put a, a red or a, gr a green gunpowder in there because there's uses in here. Even if you die and get out of raid, that non found and raid checkbox doesn't matter on those. They're still worth almost as much as they are on the flea market, non found and raid because of what you can craft with them and happen to buy those anyways to make some of these crafts. And, and, and again, there's a ton of options here. There's a ton of money you can make. There's a few of them that are the best. This again is the most important module to not stack crafts in because it's the one that people do it the most. A lot of people craft gunpowder and make bullets and think they're making the most money but they're not unless you're somebody who is only doing this like you know one craft a day or two crafts a day you know you get up in the morning before you go to work and you craft a couple of red gunpowders and you come home and then you use that craft bullets that's fine i'm not trying to be critical of telling you you're wrong when i'm just trying to say the stuff i'm presenting is the most rubles per hour so just keep that in mind i'm not trying to tell people they're wrong for doing that that's just a different method of playing the game if you will so 
all of that mumbo jumbo out of the way and whining basically let's go talk about the best craft and it's hawk gunpowder the red gunpowder and this is pretty much the way for the whole wipe there's a few weeks where the wipe goes through different things where hawk gunpowder isn't the best but it's if you're buying your components uh and stocking up on a bunch of them and getting those cheap and then crafting a bunch of red gunpowders and selling them at the peaks it's hard to beat this and the biggest reason is is this production time is 22 minutes so i'm down to where i can almost make three of these an hour right and it cycles almost perfectly with raids i, I hit these between raids and keep them flowing so i can you know i can have six hawk gunpowders in an hour basically uh after in between three raids so small changes in your component prices have a huge difference for example if you see somebody list a green gunpowder for like 70k right and the market's 80k right now that 10k difference is actually worth almost 30,000 rubles in this craft because you you the way that timing works out it's worth almost 30,000 rubles per hour that 10,000 saving and this is what makes the hawk gunpowder craft so powerful is how fast it is obviously if you can't keep up with that pace of production the red gunpowder might not be the best for you you might want to go with a longer craft you know if that's the case what is honestly probably my favorite craft is the green gunpowder because the way the green gunpowder works you just buy up a shitload of components and you roll with it. You don't have to worry about finding stuff on the flea market or anything like that because they all come from traders. It's assuming you have spot two or part two done to buy the grenades. If you don't, you can't really do it. You have to have spot two or part two done to buy the grenades. But if you are at that point, you can just buy all these up from the vendors. You can just crank out green gunpowders and you're gonna make good money. Just just aim for about 80K on your cells for the green gunpowders and you're gonna do fine. It, it I, I wanna call it a lazy man craft, but if you're going through this ever to crafting, you're not really a lazy man. So uh, it, it, that right there is why it's one of my favorite crafts now outside of this if you're a real connoisseur with buying materials and doing other things there's a lot of people that have success with even making wires a real simple craft don't take your cables out of raid i hear this all the time well if i if i take my cable my power cord or i take those out of raid you know i can actually make you know two of those or i can make eight wires so they're actually worth you know ninety thousand rubles or whatever the argument is that is not correct because the problem is is it's two it's a two slot item that's worth maybe 18k on the flea market because that's what you can buy them for so you really only get 9k per slot so you're better off finding something that that meets my 12.5k rule you know my loot guide rule for this you have 25k you sell that item you use that 25k to buy a power cord and then you've got a 7k difference and you're the same spot you were i'm not saying don't take power cords out of way yeah, i am saying don't take power cords out of raid if you want to do this craft buy your power cords cheap aim for that 15 16k on your power cords and you're going to kill it my two favorite crafts in here are vogs green gunpowders and the reason vogs are re I, I really like vogs is because they can be fun and there's a little bit of market manipulation that you can do hunting uh, the fuses and the grenades like i'll get a bunch of fuses out of raid you know because they're worth keeping they're good loot i'll list them for like 15 16k and then i'll make sure i buy up every fuse that's under 12,000 or 13,000, and it pushes everybody to go buy mine and i just make sure i get the cheap ones and i turn those into vogs i get a whole bunch of vogs and then i list those for like 33 to 35k and sell them to all the uh the crazy chad boys on the weekends that love buying you know the suicide grenades that i tend to kill myself with more than actually kill anybody else so that's just kind of what i do with vogs you can also do okay with circuit boards it's funny because a black screwdriver is one of the first items i will stick in a secure secure container if i find it because you can use it to turn uh it into two uh, uh two circuit boards this black screwdriver is worth anywhere from 13 to 15k right now they're pretty cheap but not having to buy that and then use that as a, a non fountain rate item is a huge huge one slot item three rent three of those screwdrivers is worth more than a surf kit especially when you can get your dvd drives cheap you can get your dvd drives cheap and turn those into circuit boards and make some pretty good money especially if you sell those circuit boards on the higher end so again there's tons of crafts in the workbench here none of your top crafts for making money are ammo but we'll talk about that here towards the end where there are a reason to craft ammo but let's hop over to the uh, intel center here and look at it and this one's a little bit different you can talk about rubles per hour in this one but it doesn't really make sense because the crafts are so long i tend to make flash drives uh, it is your best ruble per hour craft but that's not why i make them i make them because i tend to find lots of materials for for them in raid and instead of selling g phones and the ssds for a little bit of cash i'll turn those into thumb drives and then sell you know i'll wait till i get six nine twelve thumb drives and i'll sell those in a big stack for like 40 41 000 rubles and they sell pretty quickly they you know sometimes they sit for a couple hours but they sell because we're using them to craft their intels now that's what i do there's some other op there's a lot of other options here the vpx you can buy your components and make money with the vpx too these are not too bad to craft they're not great but they will make you a little bit of money especially if you're really careful about where you get your components at one of the really good ones is actually the violet key card if you do things right if you 
you you know if you're hunting if you're killing lots of rashala or scab bosses and you're but you're dying and you're not you're getting the labs card but you're not getting out a raid with them or if you're really good about doing the pox or barter or buying the lab cards every cycle from therapists and you get your 12 lab key cards that that way versus paying the market price you can make a bunch of money with these violet key cards a bunch of money in each time you get them and sell them especially if you really shop your yellow key cards yellow key cards are really volatile they go all the way up to like 80 90k and all the way down to like 35k and if you play lots of labs and you get lots of yellow key cards which you can do it's a great use for them honestly because the flea market fee doesn't hit them too hard and again if you're getting non-found and raid intels and you're not using those in your scav case this is a great place to use them is on the violets and just something to keep in mind for that along that same lines is the 11 sr key is what i want to talk about and if you're an interchange player there's a great opportunity for you here in crafting these the 21 ws is a pretty good key in my opinion more often than not one run pays for the card it just kind of depends on what you find in there but you can make a bunch of money with the 21 w or 21 ws key run it down to where there's only one use left and then turn it into an 11 sr and sell that 11 sr or use the 11 sr if you're you know you need to but there, there's a bunch of opportunity there if you do that and treat it like that kind of like the propital where you're using it up and then counting that craft like that but that's pretty much it for the intel center um this more value here is trying to get your tasks done i think uh, is the most value in the intel center and the bonuses um for crafting anyways kind of to back it up what we'll talk about here one of the big things that i get asked a lot and i don't answer and i should answer more often is night crafts and night crafts aren't necessarily uh, a craft for night like if you if you craft in the morning any basically anytime you're not going to craft anything for a couple hours what is the craft that makes you the single most profit and that's where you get out of this profit per hour versus total profit number is because you can't keep up with your craft so i call them night crafts for when you log off you know if you have that opportunity to craft something uh, and stay that much on top of your crafting game so there's a couple of them in here that are worth bringing up in the laboratory it's the lucky scav jump box if you have shooter born and haven't done you buy your mag cases uh from mechanic you got to buy them every reset because you can only buy one but you buy those mag cases you turn those into a lucky scab junk box and then you sell those and that'll let you a, a pretty hefty profit 50 60 sometimes 70k if you're really good about uh selling stuff and obviously more if, with flea market fee uh, reduction and stuff like that as well if you can't do that if you don't have shooter born and haven't done the raid backpack is a really good craft as well it will make you a bunch of money but you have to get your army bags from the barter you know either the soap or the two batteries obviously the soap is better than the two batteries most of the time but either one will work either one will make you money with the raid backpack craft that raid backpack when you get on the next day make sure you have room in your inventory but sell that to all the giga chads running around with couches on their bags and you make a little bit more money out of your uh, time off of the game at the med station it's propitols but only like we discussed if you're using up your golden stars to craft them if you don't have that defibs can work really well but you really need to get your components cheap or craft them you know if you're crafting wires and magnets that's a way to really squeeze a little bit more profit out of that long-term craft of the defibrillator that is a long craft uh, that you can craft at night especially if you want to use if you're working your way towards a barter that it can help out a lot there too because you're not getting dinged by that flea market fee and then lastly the workbench there's a couple of things here the spp is the best craft overall it will make you the most money but you have to be able to buy your sp13 from proper and i'm pretty sure it's level four proper if you can't do that your next best bet is m61 that is your second best now if you don't have those unlocked sp6 and 762 bp are your kind of next tier right there those guys are going to be your next long crafts that'll make you you know 80 90 sometimes 100 000 rubles depending on where you sell and get your components at so that pretty much wraps up the night crafts if i didn't mention a station like the laboratory or not the laboratory the nutrition unit or the intel because there really isn't one you know your the craft i told you to craft is the best craft period so in summary again this isn't a get rich quick thing it's a constant money flow um and done properly it'll actually make you more money than a full btc farm will you can make more money doing this than that now that bitcoin's been corrected before that wasn't the case but now we've kind of got back into that territory where you can actually beat a bitcoin farm if you're pretty consistent with this and pretty you stay on top of it and one of the more important things is, is instead of following what I'm saying and just doing the crafts I tell you to do, if you pick a craft that you like and learn it, you focus on it, you learn where the components are low and what it does, like what times of the week and days that craft is higher and lower, you are going to do better than anybody else with that. That is the best way to make money. You know, figure out when wires are the best things to do or rip stops or corduras or whatever your craft and figure those out. And that is going to be the best way for you to make money is just focus on a craft. Don't be all over the place chasing 10 crafts focus on a craft, learn it, and that'll be the best way to make money. And then last, not lastly, second to lastly, sell in big stacks. Players get tired of buying and not getting something, you know, you click and you don't buy it because somebody bought it before you. 
So they will jump down the list and they'll go look for stuff partway down that's a couple thousand rubles more expensive and buy that just out of convenience. So they're not competing with people. I do that with almost everything. I get a big stack. I will sell it for anywhere from five to 15% more depending on the item than what the kind of market rate where everything's kind of hovering at. Especially if I know, like if I see red gunpowders are like 72K or 71K, I know they're not gonna stay there. I will list at 82K red gunpowders all day long and they will sell, they sell eventually. And that's a pretty big difference in profit there. When you sell 10, you know, 10 red gunpowders at 12,000 difference, you know, you're talking 120K, it's worth it. Lastly is found in raid versus non-found in raid, right? The hideout is great for using non-found in raid stuff. So make sure you keep that in mind when you're looting. Something that's worth a bunch of money found in raid doesn't do any good to go into your secure container because if you die and you can't sell it, it's only worth what you can vendor it for. Whereas something that is not worth as much to sell on the flea market, but if you die is worth a bunch to craft, to use it in a craftable material, you know, like those black screwdrivers or magnets or pile of meds, things like that, that you can use to craft SJ, the SJ-1. You know, the SJ-1 is a great example of what's something that's not worth, you know, it's only worth 24,000 on the flea if you get out of raid with it, but it's worth 24,000 if you, even if you die with it, because you can use it to craft an SJ-6. Just keep that in mind when you're looting. There is a lot of utility in the hideout for non-found and raid stuff, but that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, I kind of went long on this. We hopefully we can get her down, edited down uh, to where it's not too rough uh, for you guys, but I appreciate it. I hope you guys got something out of all this information and we'll see you in Tarkov. Well, that wraps up the video. I appreciate you watching. Make sure you hit that like button because it helps out the channel a bunch and subscribe for future content. We also have a discord links down in the description that you can come join. We're filling up with a bunch of chill people who just love to play Tarkov. If you're looking to support the channel in other ways, we've launched a Patreon with some benefits like access to a discord channel, a constantly updated spreadsheet for my hideout calculations and some other things if you want to go check it out over there. Lastly, thanks for your support on YouTube. It means the world to me and I greatly appreciate every one of you. So with that, we'll wrap it up and we'll see you in Tarkov.